Hello, my name is Ken Weston. I'm a product marketing manager here at Tripwire. Today I'm going to be presenting on the insider threat kill chain and detecting human indicators of compromise. Usually in security, when we think about an attacker, it's usually someone that's remote, that's trying to get into our network from the outside. However, many times organizations forget that their greatest asset is also the greatest threat, and it's the very people that are working within their organization. To give you an example, an IT administrator was hired by Fannie Mae. He ended up being fired after writing a script that caused damage to their network unintentionally. However, they allowed him to go back to his desk and complete working out the rest of the day. The problem is, is that he had access to the company's 4,000 servers. Over the next few hours, he ended up running a logic bomb that was set to disable logins and wipe all the logs on the servers. Luckily, after he left, another engineer found the code before it could actually execute. They ended up bringing it into trial, and he was sentenced to 41 months in prison. The photo on the right is actually taken from his LinkedIn profile. He ended up working at several other companies before he was actually brought to trial. He worked for Bank of America, Amtrak, and GE, all as a senior systems administrator with highly privileged access. Risk assessments usually measure threat as a product of capability and intent. In order for us to better understand the insider threat, it's critical that we understand the, their intentions. What is the end goal of their particular attack? CERT did a great study where they actually broke down all the insider crimes in the United States that they have a database of. And they broke it down into four key categories. So you have IT sabotage, which would be like the Fannie Mae case that we started with. So someone actually goes in, they're a disgruntled worker or they have other cause, and they go and they cause damage to IT systems. They want to um, destroy data, they want to deface the website. Then you also have fraud, maybe in financial services, trying to access information, stealing credit card data. Then you have intellectual property theft. Usually that's not just someone trying to go in and steal business plans. It can also be a developer that maybe takes source code. Uh, it can also be a, a sales representative who goes into the CRM system and helps themselves to contact information before they go work for another company. Then, of course, you have espionage, which could be both of the corporate type as well as the, um, the state sponsored. So many people in security are familiar with the, the cyber threat kill chain, the various phases of a very targeted attack. Usually it's dealing with reconnaissance, weaponization, delivery, uh, command and control, and, and other actions. That doesn't quite apply to an insider, primarily because it's, the person's not really a hacker. They are someone who is actually use, using authorized credentials to do unauthorized things versus a hacker who's trying to actually steal those credentials or use credentials that aren't theirs. You have sort of the recruitment or the tipping point. So this is be something where maybe they have someone who has paid them from, from the outside to actually go in and steal information, or they've had an issue with HR. It's sort of that tipping point where they've actually made their mind up that they're going to cause damage or steal information. They're going to initiate the search and recon. They're actually going to start looking out for what information they have access to, how they can get access to additional information, what servers do they have access to that they can cause damage to. Then they're going to start actually going out and collecting that information. Um, and then, of course, we move into the exfiltration phase where they'll actually um, take that information and, and move it off premises, either to a remote server or a flash drive. Or if they're out there to cause sabotage, they're going to actually, you know, initiate the damage. And usually there's very early indicators that are actually non-technical. It's usually on the human resource and legal side. If uh, someone's going to be leaving within the next two weeks, they've given their notice. It's not necessarily indicating that they're going to be doing something like this, but it does increase their risk. If an uh, employee ha has had HR issues um, or maybe they got passed over for a promotion, you know, again, those are all um, indicators of risk. Then we you know, also have the technical indicators along the way. So if a, a user is trying to access servers that they shouldn't, um, they've had repeated logon failures when they try to access certain servers, um, they log into the CRM system and they start downloading large files uh, repeatedly, especially if it's after hours, or um, they're accessing you know, remote servers over SSH. And there's a lot of indicators that would show that this person, just by their, their actions, is at higher risk and is someone that you would want to watch. So you want to make sure that you're going to be logging all that information. So just an example of some human indicators of compromise. So consistently first in and last out of the office. And this is something that can actually be detected on like your key fob systems when they access the office. If there's 12 months of unused vacation, that's usually a sign that there's an issue of control. No one else has actually reviewed their work before, hasn't been handed off, and for whatever reason that person is not comfortable handing that work off. 
Um, if there's a life change, if they've given notice, there's layoff notifications in the company, um, a lot of this is sort of common sense, but when you start actually bringing all these different components together, they help to identify maybe a pattern of risk of some employees that you may want to put on some sort of a watch list to keep a closer eye on. So when it comes to prevention, there's a few things we can do within our organization to, to help mitigate a lot of the risk. The first is to consider the threats from insiders um, and partners. So not just your employees, but also your contractors, as well as trusted business partners. So if any sort of organization has access to your network or your sensitive information, you need to take their employees into uh, consideration as well. We also need to look at doing background checks for employees. There was actually some stats that showed that about 27% of actual insiders um, actually had criminal backgrounds. Clearly document and enforce your security policies and controls. Uh, periodic security awareness training for all your employees. Monitor and respond to any suspicious behavior within your organization. Anticipate and manage negative workplace issues. If there is going to be a layoff or there's going to be something that's going to affect morale, HR needs to communicate that clearly with IT. Again, if you need to set up watch list for particular employees, that's something you want to set up and get, get ahead of it way in advance. Make sure you track and secure your physical environment. Be surprised how many organizations don't lock their server rooms. It's really important to establish clear lines of communication and procedures between your HR, legal, and IT group. Usually departments are very siloed, but when it comes to actually mitigating insider threats, uh, working across departments really does a lot to help mitigate those risks. As insiders interact with our network, they will leave key indicators. An increasing number of logins. They might be logging on from home, maybe late at night at, at odd times. They're logging in frequently during vacation times. That may not be an indicator that they're using that credential uh, while they're on vacation, but another employee might have access to their credentials and be using it on their network. Changes in websites that they visit, you know, work versus personal, an increased amount of printer usage. Or if they're exporting large reports and downloads from your internal systems, uh, maybe your, your corporate intranet or your CRM systems and they're logging that information to uh, portable media, such as a flash drive or a CD-ROM drive, or exfiltrating that information to a remote server or even to social media. So when it comes to actually enforcing our policies with technology, we want to look at implementing strict password and account policies, enforce separation of duties and least privilege, extra caution, particularly with system administrators and technical or privileged users. Usually you want to add additional logging. Implement system change controls. Make sure that your log, monitor, and audit employee network activities. Deactivate any computer access following an employee's termination. So how is it that we are able to pull this information to actually make sense of it? So within our network, there's a lot of information that's available to us about user activity, be it their physical access, what systems they're accessing, what applications that they're interacting with. And that's really where Tripwire Log Center really thrives because what it allows you to do is actually make that information actionable. Where we can actually go through and we can, you know, based on various correlation events, we can initiate alerts or we can activate scripts where um, we can actually disable that user's access or send them a warning that they've, that they've tried to access a server they shouldn't have. Not only do we are we able to act on information in real time, but we can also store additional logs. So if there is a problem down the road, we can go back and we can look at that user's activity over the course of six months or a year even. And we can make sure that we have that information stored remotely. And we also have strong analytical tools that will allow us to go through and find that information very quickly. On the vulnerability and uh, configuration data side, we also have direct integrations with our, our vulnerability management product, IP360, as well as Tripwire Enterprise. Out of the box, Tripwire Log Center provides a group of rules to help you deal with the insider threat. In addition, new rules can be easily created and customized based on your own network environment. These are just a few examples of some rules that come out of the box, as well as rules that can easily be created for your environment. When people get started, they always ask, well, what should I start logging first? At a bare minimum, you'll want to log um, anything that comes from your firewall, you want to log any unsuccessful login attempts. If you have an intrusion detection system, you want to log everything from that as well. Web proxies, antivirus alerts, as well as change management. So before an organization considers getting a log correlation engine or a SIM type system, there are some things you need to consider. First is you need to determine what the log volume is going to be. Usually a lot of these systems, they actually uh, measure their pricing based on events per second. That's important also to figure out what sort of system requirements you're going to have 
what kind of hardware are you going to run this on? You also want to establish uh, log management policies and procedures very early on. Um, ensure this includes your log retention policies. Some industry actually have uh, more legal requirements around this than others. Also identify what's going to be collected and also who's going to manage the logging systems. You're going to want to fine tune your uh, logging system to weed out all the false positives. A lot of security devices make a lot of noise, so you want to tune that system to reduce that false positive and focus really on the events that matter. You also uh, want to establish a baseline. What is normal behavior? What does my network look like normally on a day-to-day -day basis? What would constitute normal behavior for my users? That is set so we can establish the baseline and distinguish anomalies from true threats within our organization. Also, accessing information. So multiple departments need to access data to determine what information will be collected and who has permissions to view it, not just usually the Security Operations Center. A lot of times this log data needs to be shared across um, different organizations. So really de determining who's going to have access to that information, who's going to manage it, is critical. Let's solve a common real-world insider threat problem using log intelligence. Let's say we have an employee who's showing some potential risk to the business. We've decided that we want to keep an eye on uh, what servers he connects to that are outside the network, particularly after hours. So I'm going to write some rules to uh, basically alert on any connections from outgoing ports um, after hours. If he's going to be using SSH, Telnet, or a remote desktop, for example. So I'm going to write that out in what's known as common event expression language. A lot of um, log intelligence tools, SIM tools, uh, allow you to import this. It's an open standard, including Tripwire Log Center. Not only do we have the ability to import existing CEE files, but we also can create correlation rules inside of Tripwire Log Center itself, as well as dashboards. So here's an example of a, a dashboard that we've created for our human resources department. So we're able to see the, the top hosts of the number of successful logons. We can see if someone's logging into SSH sessions, um, where those particular servers are located uh, geographically. We can see the time of day. We can uh, monitor our um, activity there as well. If someone's accessing the network at um, odd times. We can see the, um, the number of logons per user. So we can see which specific users are logging into high value assets. If there's any failed logons or if an employee tried to successfully log into any systems. We can also look at a system that's making multiple SSH connections. We can also see large file that's being created or copied to it. Um, that's something we want to keep an eye on. And not only do we have the, the ability to run these reports, but we can also see that there's notifications and we can set the priority of them. User um, accesses a high value asset from an unauthorized workstation or server, um, such as a remote um, server, for example, then that's definitely something we want to trigger an alert on um, and something we want to act on. We've had a number of customers that have used Tripwire Log Center to catch insiders. We actually had a power company that uh, deployed Tripwire Log Center, and they immediately discovered the account of a terminated system administrator that was actually in use. The account was being used around 4 a.m. on a Wednesday, um, and at, at the same time, they also found that logging on a key firewall um, had been disabled. Another customer uh, was a major tire retailer. They actually did a proof of concept with both, both Tripwire Log Center as well as Tripwire Enterprise. And they found um, that there was a back door that was set up by a terminated employee uh, and it was actively being accessed to um, access uh, certain information. Our final slide, how do you respond to an insider threat? It's, in, it's critical that you implement secure backup and recovery processes. You need to quickly audit users' network behavior. Again, that's something that Tripwire Log Center does really well at, identifying not only um, incidents that you need to focus on in real time, but also allows you to do the research and actually go back and look at um, any other changes that that user has made um, on your network over a given period of time. You also want to develop an insider incident response plan. Again, that needs to be interdepartmental. It's really critical that your HR, legal, and IT teams work together. I want to thank you for taking the time to review this presentation. If you have more questions or like to learn more about Tripwire Log Center, I invite you to visit www.tripwire.com/tlc.